So with the markets being down right now, today's video, I'm going to tell you about why it's not probably a good idea to be selling, even though the market is dropping off and covering the concept of fear and greed within the crypto market or kind of the other markets, but mainly the crypto market right now because we're seeing a massive drop off. So as you can see here on the Bitcoin chart, gone from around 58,000 down to around 53,000 in a day, but it shot back up kind of nicely up to 56, which is fine. Now, a lot of people right here is what we're seeing, you know, institutional sell off, I believe. And then that causes more retail sell off. So the institutions might sell off because, you know, they have some insider information or something like that. And they choose to sell that off. And then what happens is it causes a snowball effect, basically, where the retail sellers like us would actually sell off. And this is all due to this fear and greed index. So it's a kind of relatively new thing. And it's come along with cryptocurrency quite a lot just because of the swings of cryptocurrency. It goes up and down quite a lot. But you can kind of see how it's displayed here. We do actually have a, you know, fear and greed index right now. So it's at 29, so it says fearful. And then yesterday it was fearful, last week neutral, and last month it was greed. So you can see how it quickly turned from greed into fear. Mainly the reason that you shouldn't be selling right now is because everyone is fearful. Normally in the markets you see a lot of psychology where there's a crowd of people which will just follow the crowd. If the market goes down, they start selling off their investments. If the market goes up, they start buying. That's why we see these wild price swings in Bitcoin, just because of this kind of psychology of fear and greed. The main thing that I want to get across in this video is why you shouldn't sell your investments is because you basically want to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. That's how you kind of gain in the market. And for Bitcoin, when everyone was very, very fearful, when we look back here down to the FTX thing happened uh, around 16K, this would have been one of the best times ever, and I'm sure it was one of the most fearful times ever on this fear and greed index. So that would have been your best time ever to buy it in the past, I don't know, three or four years, uh, excluding the previous time before the previous bull run. At 16K, that's a, you know, a three to four, so 3.5 times increase up to where we are now, and maybe a four times increase to the top of the market around here. So you can basically see that it tends to be the people who are greedy when everyone's fearful and the people who are fearful when everyone's greedy is basically who wins out in terms of the market. So people that were buying around here, obviously on the channel, we've done a lot of cryptocurrency mining around here, uh, not as such investing, but mining kind of has the same connotations as investing at these lower levels because you're getting the coin at that level and you're obviously paying for electricity. However, same thing goes in here. If you want a dollar cost average it around here, that would have been your basically best bet in the past two or three years in terms of any kind of asset. Maybe Tesla outperformed it, but I don't think it outperformed it up to the top here. Or maybe Nvidia might have outperformed it as well. So there's only a certain amount of assets that will have outperformed it. As I said, I don't actually know if Tesla or Nvidia did outperform it, but I'm sure it was for a certain point of time, maybe up until here. And then as it kept jumping up, probably Bitcoin outperformed anything else. So as I said, with this fear and greed index, you have a lot of people being fearful now, and it's probably one of the best times to be buying. So first best time to buy would have been through here, but obviously second best time to buy would be down here at these lower levels. And we've kind of already seen this happen as we get to the bottom here within the last day even. The bottom is around, I don't know, let's say that's the bottom at around 53. Or is there anything lower? No, it's around 53. But slowly, as it dropped down to pretty much 53, it comes all the way back up to 56. So you can see that fear and greed index. A lot of people kind of know what they're doing in cryptocurrency. So I do believe that this would have been an institutional sell-off and then previously to snowball that, a retail sell-off. A lot of people do say that it's Germany who, you know, caused it as they're selling Bitcoin right now. However, I don't really think that that's the case. There's only, you know, 434 million that's been sold over the past, uh, I want to say that's 10 days-ish. And that would have counted to maybe not even 1% of the trading volume 
across the whole board for even today in the last 24 hours. So you can't really say that that amount of selling going on affected the price this much. It's a lot more selling going on to affect the price. Maybe it was a kickstart to it, as if they were selling off, other people might be selling off as well institutionally, and then snowballs into retail investors. As I said, now is one of the best times. So if you were to dollar cost averaged every day, and I always say that you should dollar cost average every day for cryptocurrency because of things like this. That being the reason is if you look at the markets over time, you can see the best and the worst days. So this is the S&P 500. You can also see it for Bitcoin right here. So this was the 10 best and the 10 worst days for Bitcoin each year in the same range. So you can see that the best day for Bitcoin ever was in 2013, obviously just because it spiked up so much, but the worst day was also in 2013. So it's kind of cumulatively gone down here. This only goes up to 2023, as you can see here, but I'm expecting that if the 2024 data comes out, there'll be one little spike up here, which would have been from this time, if we look about here, probably, where this jumped up quite a lot. So if you miss out on these days, this is why I'm saying you should dollar cost average basically every day, because you're going to miss out on the best days, and then you're going to miss out on the worst days. So the worst days are actually good because you can buy it at a lower price. The reason that this doesn't work necessarily weekly or monthly is because you don't really get to take advantage of all of these days. You might, you know, hit one of those days. It will be spread over the month, as in you could miss it out if you only dollar cost averaged every month. But over a long enough period of time, it doesn't necessarily matter. It just gives you a better average return. I believe if you're doing it every day for cryptocurrency because of the wild price swings that happen in cryptocurrency. Obviously every other cryptocurrency is down as well. When we look at the market cap overall, you can see we've gone from around uh, 2.25 trillion and the lowest went all the way down to about 2.06 trillion. And then if we go down here, you can see the altcoin market cap as well. Let's go to 24 hours. It drops from around 1.1 trillion down to uh, 980 billion. So I think that the altcoins, obviously, they suffer more than Bitcoin uh, just because there's more psychology behind it, fear and greed. Bitcoin always kind of goes up and down, and a lot of altcoins will follow that. Either they'll drop off more or they'll come up in gains more. And then, you know, that leads us into an altcoin season after, you know, a certain amount of time, depending on whether altcoins are up slightly more than Bitcoin, basically. And then, as I said right here, same thing with the S&P 500. This fear and greed index comes in where people are fearful, so they're not going to be buying into the market. They'll sell off. And it says here that in 2020, the second best day happened immediately after the second worst day. So when you talk about those black swan events, you can see how if it dropped all the way down and you were dollar cost averaging, every day into the S&P 500. On the worst day, you probably would have been at a loss. However, on the day after that, you actually had the second best day happening immediately after the second worst day. So you can kind of see how if you miss out on one of those days, then you're either in the loss or you're in the positive and you don't want to obviously miss out on any day. That's why we dollar cost average for basically every day in cryptocurrency. Now, I do believe that Binance and a lot of other exchanges do offer this dollar cost average auto invest every day, as long as you top up the account with USDT or USDC. Potentially, that could be a thing to look into. And with stocks, I believe that a lot of brokers will allow you to auto invest into things. I don't believe that they can do it on weekly. The only things that I've seen personally are monthly auto invests. That might be a thing to look into if you want to do it weekly just to get a better average. Anyway, so we see here the value of $10,000. If you invested all days, you have 64,000. But if you miss the 10 best days, then you only have around 30,000. If you miss the 20 best days, you only have around 17,000. And then as soon as you miss the 30 best days, you're basically at 11,000. Anything under the 30 best days, so 40, 50, and 60, you are basically losing money within the market. So as I said, you can see how that fear and greed index comes in. 
when everyone is fearful, it's probably the best time that you should buy. Don't try to time the market, just dollar cost average it. There's no point in trying to time it. We can see this fear and greed index over time. As I said a month ago, let's just go for a year right here. This is the most fearful time apart from around here. It's nearly at the same level. So September of 2023 was the last fearful time, maybe eight months ago. And consequently, you have the fear right here. So if it's the lowest fear index, I think that would be a good time to buy. If we go on max, we can see what the lowest one is looking like it was down here. And this would have been in 2019. So that's looking like a fear of maybe five. So in the past couple of years, we've seen obviously up, this is the bull run in 2020. And then down here was the FTX fiasco. So that goes down to six, seven. And then before that, we can see this little drop off and that's around the 30 range. Uh, this is at 30 as well. And then this one drops below. From here to maybe February has been the lowest fear that we've had in the market for quite a while, basically. So as I said, now's the best time to buy any of the cryptocurrencies that you like. Me personally, I obviously recommend mineable coins on this channel just because I feel like they're backed by something. I don't really like proof of stake coins. So, so in my opinion, Bitcoin, obviously, Casper coin, which we really like on this channel. If you're into the investing videos and you haven't watched any of the mining videos, if you have watched the mining videos, you'll know we're heavily invested into Casper coin through mining. And then I'd say maybe a bunch of other ones like Alephium and maybe even some spec coins that you might think are down right now, but do have potential in the future. So let me know your thoughts on this. If you'll be buying some more, as you can see right here, basically everything is down following uh, Bitcoin, apart from the stable coins. And just leave a comment what you're doing in the market leave a comment about what you're buying, stuff like that. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.